With us from Istanbul, a Syrian activist, Abu Dandashi. Mr. Dandashi, good evening. Thanks for being with us. Hello, good evening. So as you may have heard, we've been talking a little bit about the role of Iran backing Assad in this whole situation. What, would, what is your perspective of Iran's involvement in Syria, of the support of Bashar al-Assad? What stake do you have from your perspective of Iran reaching a nuclear deal? Well, Syria is not the only uh, place where Iran has been in the, in the ascendancy. Uh, you have Lebanon and Iraq and uh, Yemen. Uh, in each case, it's been disastrous for the countries uh, involved. Uh, Iranian proxies are less interested in running uh, a stable, modern state and more in promoting Iranian interests. And, you know, Lebanon and Iraq are barely functioning states. Uh, Syria and Yemen, less so. How that do you the sort of view of Iranian ascendancy. You're mentioning then Ira Iranian involvement, as we've been discussing, across the Middle East. What is your view of, of this sort of foreign involvement in regional crises like Syria? What do you think should happen in your home country? Well, what should happen is that uh, there definitely should be uh, a no-fly zone. That's definitely obvious by now. A no-fly zone is the only way that a safe haven could be created to set up an alternative political uh, movement uh, in Syria. Syria right now desperately needs a third way. It is stuck between extremist Islamists and uh, the regime, the moderates uh, have not been getting the support that they need to counter the, the massive support that the other groups have been getting. A safe haven is definitely a must, like, like, uh, like uh, Libya had. Like, uh, um, yes, uh, that's, that's basically what we Mr. need right Dandashi, now. Mr. Dandashi, when we look at Syria now more than four years into war, who are the moderates? Because when it began four years ago, more than four years ago, we maybe didn't see the Islamic State as the power it is now, for example. The Islamic State had a safe haven in Raqqa. They had two years to organize the Raqqa, and look what they managed to do with it. Same thing with the regime. Anybody who wants to uh, fight for the regime knows where to sign up. The moderates never had an address where their resources could be pulled, where people could volunteer their efforts, where uh, money could go. There was never that uh, reliable address, and that is, what a safe, that, is, that is the role that a safe haven provides. And without that, there is no use in talking or expecting a national, uh, an alternative national movement to arise unless you have the space for it to be able to, to, be able to organize its activities. So at this point, what you say is extremely reasonable, that, uh, that the moderates have not been sort of cultivated in Syria, have not been given the tools with which they can actually grow. So as it you stands know, now, is there any address for the moderates if there were a decision to, to be taken to start to support them more? All that is needed is to deny Assad the use of his airplanes, his uh, bar barbaric uh, barrel, barrel bombing uh, campaigns, and you will see a huge change in the political landscape, not just the military, but the political landscape in Syria. And that will be best for the, for the entire region. Uh, just one last note, since we're talking about the Iran deal all the time here in the last hours, what would you like to see happen in the negotiations? I think that by now uh, Barack Obama has given away way too many compromises. He has uh, uh, given the Iranians billions of dollars as a reward for just uselessly talking. I think that no matter what kind of deal comes up, Obama has already given away too much to Iran. Abu Dandashi, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you very much.